And there are two types of logic in the world that you can use to base an argument on. There's inductive and deductive logic. Things, things that have four legs are animals. Cats have four legs, therefore cats are animals. That's deductive logic. You lay out your premises and then your conclusion. And since everyone around you is as brilliant as you, agrees with your premises, and agrees with your logic, they follow right along and they end up at the same conclusion that you gave them. This is that fantasy scenario that I started off with today. But it does have its uses. We'll get to that in a couple minutes. The other form of logic is inductive logic, where essentially you overpower someone with examples and then you generalize from the examples. So you say, wow, people with green shirts think that I'm wonderful. People with red shirts think that I'm wonderful. People with blue shirts think that I'm wonderful. My goodness, everyone thinks that I'm wonderful. <laughs> and we all know people who have done this type of inductive logic. And as a uh, direct result, um, they have this illusion that, that they now have a valid generalization as the result of looking at the, at the separate examples. That is a, a perfectly fine form of logic used correctly. And it's something else that you hear in organizations all the time. The, the exact phrase, I believe, is industry standard, or everyone's doing it, which is just a shorthand for taking a whole bunch of inductive examples and concluding that because everyone is doing this, therefore we must do it too. So there's inductive and deductive logic. Well, as we established at the beginning, you can have all of that logic perfectly laid out, and everyone is still not going to follow what you have to say. If I have a choice between asking you a question and making a statement, so let's say the statement is 2 plus 2 equals 4. If I make the statement 2 plus 2 equals 4, what might your reaction to that be? Duh. Duh. <laughs> so emotionally, you're basically, instead of answering the question, which there was none, you are now forming all kinds of opinions and judgments about me. You are thinking, you are, you are evaluating the, what my statement. Is it true? Is it false? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And essentially, you're engaging in lots of, from my point of view, unproductive thinking. Anyone who's read 1984 knows unproductive thinking is bad. <laughs> Productive thinking is good. And 1984 was 23 years ago. So we, 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 can, we can now use the lessons from that book. If I want you to follow a chain of logic, would it be better to ask questions? So if I asked you about the premise and said, how many legs do animals have? Four. Sure. How many legs does a cat have? Four. Well, if animals have four legs and cats have four legs, what does that mean about cats? Do you think they're a type of animal? Yes. Could be. Yes. Let's investigate. What I've just done is use the Socratic method to lead you through a chain of logic. When you use the, the and this, for those of you who don't know, the Socratic method is questioning. You ask questions and you allow the person or the people that you're talking with to come to answers and conclusions, which then go down the chain of logic that you're interested in. Human beings, especially in, if you ask a thing with an upward inflection at the end of it, human beings who speak English are hardwired to try to answer questions when you ask them. And when you give someone a statement, they are either hardwired to agree, disagree, defend, whatever, but it's always a reaction to the statement as opposed to knowing that they're going to actually investigate the substance of it. When you want to start leading people through some form of logic and you know that you're going to end up at a particular location, map out the logic beforehand for yourself and lead people through it by asking questions. Ask questions, facilitate the discussion around the answer, ask the next question so that what you assemble is the pieces of the logic. Remember, we started with the idea that people will buy in to things that they participate in. When they have had a hand in walking through the logic and in coming up with the answers, by the end of it, if the logic is sound and if the premises hold, they will be far more bought in than if you simply tell them, here's the logic, here are the premises, done. Now, it may also be the case, there's a, there's a, very, there's a politically advantageous thing to you about asking questions which is maybe you're wrong. Now, I know that would never happen to anyone in this room, but perhaps someone who buys the video someday will, will, it might be wrong. I'm sorry, I didn't really mean that. Um, but if in a hypothetical world you were wrong, if you are asking people questions and they come up with good substantiated answers that aren't the ones you were expecting, 
Now you get a chance to learn and adapt your proposals in a way that smoothly fits with the ongoing conversation and does not make it look like you're wrong. Instead, you get to learn and adapt and then continue influencing the group to go in whatever direction you want the group to go in.